In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For any man that is in Christ becomes a new creation. Behold, old things are passed away and everything has become new. I was like, you know, when you are closer to God, you know, as you grow in your faith, does it get easier? And the person responds to me and says, yes, it gets easier. That's all I needed to hear. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Princess Renny here and I hope you're doing well. On this channel we talk about Christian faith, lifestyle, as well as natural hair. And today's video is going to be a Christian faith video. It's one of those videos where it's like, I'm Christian but dot dot dot. You fill in the blanks from there because being a Christian is definitely not as easy as some Christians may make it seem, but it's also not as difficult as some people in the world may think it is. So for this series, I like to talk about different topics, things that are relevant to my life as well that I've dealt with um, in my Christian faith, in this Christian walk, with the hopes of encouraging someone else that may be going through the same thing or may go through it somewhere along the lines. Maybe you're thinking about being a Christian. Maybe you haven't made that decision to take the leap of faith to give your life over to God, or maybe you have and backslide, turn away, um, whatever the case may be, whatever it is that you're going through at this moment in time, this is not to condemn anyone. This is not to make anyone feel less than. This is honestly a video about my life and my experiences in this Christian walk. And I want to show you guys my t-shirt because I think it's really relevant to this moment right now. It says, for the son of man came to seek and save the lost. So he's not here to condemn anyone. He, you know, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came into this world so that we can be freed from our sin. So that's really what this video is about. Um, honestly, guys, <laughs> I have a topic that's been on my heart for a while for me to talk about. And uh, I honestly don't know how it's going to come across. I'm just trusting God to lead me and be my voice and to say everything that needs to be said in the way that it should be said. So, with that being said, I'm going to start off with the first. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For any man that is in Christ becomes a new creation, right? Behold, old things are passed away and everything has become new. I am paraphrasing this scripture because I want to say it in a way that everyone understands what it means, um, but then it digs a little bit deeper, right? So it claims that, once you're in Christ, once you've given up the things of the past and you've decided to take that leap of faith, take that step forward to surrender your life to God, you become a new person. You're completely renewed. So everything that you've done in the past is completely washed away, completely cleansed, and you become new. What about when you're going through these things and you're trying to confirm to yourself, I am a new creation. All the things of the past, they're all gone. But maybe you have people in your life that are still appealing to that side of you that is in the past, right? Maybe it's the desire to go partying. I talked to you guys about that in one of my previous videos where I dealt with like wanting to go partying and wanting to live that lifestyle because that's what I knew, that's what I've experienced, that's what I've been a part of. What if those thoughts come back? Maybe you were um, fornicating, maybe you were stealing, maybe you were drinking, whatever the case is, what if those thoughts come back into your mind and you have the desire now to do that thing that is supposed to be the past, it's supposed to be gone away, right? And behold, you're supposed to be a new person. I think it's important as Christians to read the Word of God, internalize God's Word, and understand what it actually means, right? So a lot of Christians may look at someone and say, well, you're a Christian. You're not supposed to think like that. You're a Christian. You're not supposed to want to do those things. You're a Christian. You're not supposed to do those things, right? And it's like, well, there's an enemy that is really real. There's a God that is even more real, but there's an enemy that is real and is always going to be torment, trying to torment God's people. 
I mean, I say he's always going to be tormenting God's people. He's always going to try to torment God's people. He's going to try to turn you away from the things of God. And this scripture holds so much weight because even as you continue on to read the other verses, it talks about the peace that God gives us, right? Because God sent his son who did not come to the world to condemn us, but that we can be free through him, right? That we can have a new life, become a new creation through him. We have to understand that this is something that God freely gave to us. And we have the opportunity to make that decision if we're going to accept it or not, right? And it's a daily thing. It's not just Oh, yes, I accepted God as my Lord and Savior. I accepted Jesus Christ. I am Christian and I am renewed. I am healed. I am blessed. I am highly favored. Yes, all these things are so, so true. And the enemy is going to try to convince you that it's not true. So every single day, every single waking moment, you have to keep reminding yourself that you are a new creation. And those thoughts, they're going to come. Right. I've definitely dealt with it time and time again, where it was like flip flopping back in the days. And even like the previous year, even the previous minute, man, <laughs> there's times people say things to me and I'm like, God, can you just close your ears and your eyes for two seconds? Let me just, I just need two seconds. I could get it out in two seconds. But <laughs> have you been there? Like, seriously, I'm old, but God, right? So we have to, when we're reading God's word, understand that this word that he's presenting to us is for us to understand that we have that peace, right? The peace to know that we are now reconciled with God. Please continue reading the other rest of the verses. But God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to become sin for us. Meaning that the sins that we have committed, the sins that we are committing, and the sins that we possibly may commit in the future, knowing or unknowing, um, those sins are all forgiven. It is through Jesus Christ coming down on the cross to die for our sins that we today can say we are freed and we are healed and we are that new creation, right? And so, because Jesus Christ came down, he is the way that we're able to be reconciled to God. Meaning that we were at fault, right? Because we sinned. And sin separates us from God because God wants nothing to do with sin. Sin is not of God. He is perfect, truly perfect, right? And we can't be perfect ever, Right? We're not perfect at all. We sin, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Always, 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 right? And that glory of God is his presence. And because of that sin, it separated us from God. So we needed Jesus Christ to come down and clear that debt, right? And to make us new so that the things that we've done in the past, the sins that we've committed are now washed away. And now we can become with oneness with God and be his children and be his um chosen generation that royal priesthood that he's called us to be so whenever we think of that scripture and a lot of christians choose to use it in the way that it's like condemning someone you sure you christian you sure and like pointing like you would do something like that oh i'm channeling a <laughs> an older um christian oh lord mercy but like this is really what they do you sure you christian and you do this and you act like this and you think like this and they're constantly judging that's not the way that god wants us to communicate with one another god has called us to be his chosen generation He's called us to be that new creation by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior so we can be healed and cleansed and purified even when the temptations come because they're going to come. That's, that's the thing we have to remember as Christians. The temptations are going to come. I remember when I was younger, now starting off um, in my journey of faith, I was about like 10 or 11 and I would always see these people like pastors especially like experiencing temptation and experiencing the enemy trying to bring them down um and it's not just sexual per, um perversion it is literally like anything you could think of like finance finance like having debt you know like not having that relationship with their family members like all of these things and you 
try to understand like if this is a pastor like why are they going through this so my little brain i was like you know when you are closer to god you know as you grow in your faith does it get easier and the person responds to me and says, yes, it gets easier. And that's all I needed to hear. I needed to know that as I'm continuing on this journey, that it's going to get easier for me to push through. Because around that time, um, I was a little girl that has always been healthy. And for some reason, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm giving my life to God. I had just gotten baptized and everything. And now I'm like in and out of the hospital. Um, going to doctor's visits and they're trying to run this test and they want to make sure this is good and do this surgery. I guess I'll talk about that another time, but my biggest concern was I want to continue on this journey and I don't want to have to deal with all that temptation anymore. I don't want to have to deal with all these trials anymore. So does it get easier? And they said, yes, it does. Guys, I'm here to tell you from personal experience and what this person meant to say was that your faith, your reliance on God, and based on the experiences that you've had, you're able to hold on to your faith a little bit more. So we know the story of Job, how he's faced so many trials and temptations because he was so sold out for God and he knew God and his power, right? He had to trust in God to get all those things that he had. God didn't just provide it to him just because. Like he had that close relationship with God and that's how he was able to withstand the walls of the enemy. Granted, Job was crying out. He cursed the day that he was born, but he never cursed God. And I think that's what they meant. Like, it's going to be hard. You're going to cry out. You're going to wonder why you're going through all of these things. Because the higher you get in your faith, the more difficult the temptations, the trials become. But because we are that new creation and we're reconciled to God, he's always going to be looking out for us. He's always going to be there right by your side through those trials, through the temptations, and keeping you no matter what. So I'm Christian, but I'm struggling because honestly, guys, temptations and trials they're real the enemy is real but we gotta remember the god that we're serving right we gotta remember him in the midst of the pandemic we gotta remember him in the midst of those um financial situations that we may be going through right the finances that you might have lost the family members that you were unable to see or that you've lost in the midst of those storms guys we have to know that there is a god because it is hard. It is so hard. No matter what you choose. You choose not to trust God. And you choose not to believe in him. And you're going to realize that in this world, the enemy wants to use you for things that are not of God. And you're also going to realize that, you know what? These things that I'm going through, there's literally no one else that can fix it. There's li like you. Who do you turn to? Who do you believe? Who do you believe in? Who do you rely on to help you in this world? And you understand that this world is also temporary. You're not going to be here forever. You have someone to answer to when you die, right? So it is hard choosing that. I, I don't know how or why someone would want to choose that path. But also when you choose the path to trust and believe in God, there is a war that is going on. There's a war going on, a war in the heavenly. There's a song, like, um, I don't remember the, all the words. It's a very long song, but literally she keeps singing, there's a war going on, a war in the heavenlies, meaning that we can't see it, but God is looking out for us. He's sending his angels to surround us, right? And to protect us and to guide us, right? And the enemy is upset about that. And so he's going to try to fight off those angels that are surrounding you and protecting you and guiding you the way that God wants you to go. So we as Christians every single day need to make that decision every single day that we're going to trust God and we're going to believe in him and then we're going to continue to run this race and fight this fight because it's not easy. And it is sometimes it's a struggle. Right. We we're supposed to be a new creation. We're supposed to do this and we're supposed to do that. God's word says it. So we need to believe it. But even as we're believing, we also need to not just think about it. Oh, yes, this is what God's word says. I believe it. And we just have it in our minds. 
we need to believe, trust, and follow God with our hearts. Like our hearts and our minds need to be aligned so that our entire body, our entire being comes to believe that now. To know that I am, I am renewed. That, that girl, that girl is of the past. I am renewed. I am changed. I am transformed. I am that new creation that God has called me to be. So even when the trials come, even when the temptations come, I'm not going to fall into it because you know what? I am a new creation. I am reconciled with God. All my sins are forgiven, right? Don't let anybody remind you of your past without backing up God's word to know that, hey, he brought me through. Because again, it's your past. It's not who you are right now. It's your past. So you could bring that up as your testimony. Yeah, I used to do that. I was like that, but no more. Amen. <laughs> so I say all this to say, I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter, but um, sometimes you're gonna struggle. Christians can struggle, but you gotta understand that struggles don't last forever. The trials, they don't last forever. God is gonna see you through. Okay. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was an encouragement to you. Please, please, please continue to read the rest of the verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and all the way through. You can also read verse 16. Um, and yeah, if you guys have anything else you'd like to add, please comment it down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. Bye, guys.